What an ending. That is the Dixie Dregs from the new album, What If? Take It Off the Top. And speaking about the Dixie Dregs, I have them here with me in the studio at WMMR. What, what brings you all the way from Macon, Georgia? <laughs> Playing those gigs, making a few bucks. Promoting the second album mainly, though. Uh-huh. Okay, well, why don't you introduce yourselves here? To the okay, starting right to left. Listener. I'll jump into it. My name's Andy West. I play bass. Steve Morris, guitar. Andy Rod Steve. Morgenstein, Rod. drums, percussion. <laughs> Mark Parrish, keyboards. Uh, <laughs> keyboards. <laughs> keyboards. What? What? Hey, that southern influence. I can even tell it in your definitely. name. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, um, that that's one thing, is your name. Where did you get your name? You're minus the violinist right now. I know that, but they don't know that. So I'll tell you, they're minus the violinist. <laughs> Yeah, he had nothing to do with the name, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> no, Who's responsible for this name? It's just it just happened out of we had an it's, old band. Uh -huh. It's an actual occurrence, this father. Nobody made it up. Yeah. <laughs> you see we had a band called Dixie Grit <coughs> before. And that broke up, leaving uh -huh. two of five members, me and Andy. Uh, uh -huh. the guitar and bass. So we were the dregs of the band. So instead of Dixie Grit, it became Dixie Dregs, and we started a new one. Hey. And you're primarily uh, promoting it right now, the uh, second album. Yeah. That, that's, that's why you're here in Philadelphia. Where, where have you been? Well, we, we finished a few months ago, finished recording, and we've been doing gigs around the southeast. And just this trip, we came from where? North Carolina to Delaware, University of Delaware, and then up here for this expo convention. Uh huh. Well, I tell you one thing that uh, puzzles me about your music is you refuse to be uh, categorized. Um, I notice some classical influences, perhaps yeah. uh, rock, jazz. Now, where primarily would you place your music? In every one of those, and in country. Because, well, everybody's into different things, and it try to use the good things of music, whatever, you know, you can pick out and put it together. And it does come off as a mixture, but not a totally, you know, homogeneous mixture where it's all the same, you know, uh -huh. the same consistent. We try to like concentrate on different styles and then move to another thing. But that is where in the whole concept of the band lies, in that we don't really root ourselves in any one thing. Right. Right, because uh, it's, a, it's a exciting to go hear a band that that gives you a little bit of everything uh -huh. and, and shows enthusiasm in, in each one of those different fields. Yeah, I mean, but it seems to me when you got your band together, did you exactly think of, of what kind of music you want to produce? <laughs> I think we <laughs> As just... you rustled the papers around. No, that, prob <laughs> that probably developed along the way. We knew that we just wanted to play the best instrumental music possible. Uh-huh. Okay, well, let's go on to another track from your latest record, if I can get it queued up here. What is? Say hello. Hello. Hi. Sing. Hello. 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 Yeah, this is the only time you'll hear us sing. So, uh... Oh, God. <laughs> you can say that again. <laughs> hey. Are you ready to go? Yes. Goodbye. How much difference there was because uh -huh. we just heard a tape. The, ener tape the energy and excitement playing for live audience is so much different than being in a small studio, which is very dry and not much of an atmosphere. Do you prefer being in the studio or in front of an audience? Well, in the studio you can control the conditions. You know, you can add yeah. the things to make up for that for that dryness. That's why you you know you need all the electronic effects the studio has. But playing live, I mean, you can do anything. Uh -huh. Everything's great. Well, as I said, I noticed that definite classical influence. Uh, maybe you can tell me if you can place a couple of those influences. Do you have any favorite composers or? Sure, Aaron Copland. Uh, American. Yeah, and and Bach and Beethoven, all them guys, you know. Back then. Oh, right, Steve. How about you, uh, Rod, or uh, Andy? Well, hey. I'll, I'll go ahead, Mark. Rod, since you're so confused. <laughs> 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 no, I, I, you know, there's all, everybody, like Steve says, has all kinds of different 
influences. Of course, you can't deny the greatness of certain composers, I mean, like, mm -hmm. like Bach and Beethoven, because they're just, you know, their music is going to last forever. And it always has its effect, however, you know, subtle it is on what you do. But uh, I think more recently, electric bands have had much more effect on anything that we've done. You know, the uh, John McLaughlin type stuff, the Beatles, all this. It goes on back, you know, just rock and roll through the years. That derives mainly from the... Oh, ignore that bell. That's a, okay. we'll try. a little aspect of our station that we like to uh, <clears throat> have a mark of our station. But <laughs> uh, what about Mark here, the keyboardist? Uh, what kind of classical influences have you had? Oh, mm, little Chopin, Brahms, Bach, <laughs> little Beethoven. Bit of this, a little bit of this. You name it. <laughs> little Bond. Yeah. He's, an <laughs> He's an unbelievable sight reader. You can put anything. Anything up to 12 tone music in front of him, and he'll sight read it, you know, triple flats. That's impressive. He's a freak. I mean, we uh, <laughs> well, freak. <laughs> we picked him up in a circus, too. I really appreciate it. A side that. show. <laughs> no, that's great. And uh, Alan came, he was playing in symphony. He was playing violin in the symphony. So we had, you know, plenty of classical influence. Uh huh. What about jazz? There's plenty of that, too. Yeah. Yeah. We got Some of us are really jazz, yeah. into it and, and come from that that kind of background. Rod, Rod is the real here. jazz. Oh, you can you're starting to pin places uh, on people. I can yeah. see. Alan, the the violinist, is your main classical, huh? And Mark. And Mark. Yeah. And uh, Rod Mr. here Stokes, is, Rod the is the main jazz. jazz. But he can do a lot of stuff. Really I well. had to go through the classical training and playing in in an orchestra. And a concert band, that sort what of thing. What orchestra? This just in school, in, uh -huh. in school orchestras. In University of Miami. Yeah, those kind of things. W which four of you were from the University of Miami? Um, Us and Alan. <laughs> Us and Alan. Mark, Mark went <laughs> to Georgia State University. Yeah. Everyone else went to. Well, what can I say? People can't see him. How did How did you meet Mark? I know, because I know Mark wasn't I was, with the original band. How did you guys get together with Mark? Well, I was more or less in the original band. Oh, you were? <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was in a original band. <laughs> we had a lot of versions of the band before yeah. uh. before we got together and, and, and got the uh, permanent one down in, in Miami while we were going to school there. But we had we started off even as a trio using tapes, you know, like recorded parts. Just guitar, bass, and drums, and, and two tape recorders. <laughs> yeah, then, then this is way back in the old days. And then Clark came on, and because we got tired of synchronizing the tapes and everything, because you have to play to the tempo, so we added him on uh, synthesizer and organ. I made it four, and then we played around with that. And we went down to Miami and got the pros, sticks. <laughs> I mean, Rod Morgenstern on drums and Alan on violin. <laughs> so then it turned into a five piece. We went through lots of keyboard players then because the keyboard players were always going with the gigs for the money. You know? At one time we had seven keyboard players. Not at the same time.